There we go. We're live. Thank you, Joe. Awesome. We're all set. Got it. There we okay. Go. Thank you, Joe. Awesome. I think I need to be awesome. I'm going to mute, mute you, Joe. There you go. Thank you. All right, folks. Uh, it's it's the first first crew cast of the month, first portrait track crew cast of the month. So uh, you know that that means it means contests. It also means generally um, a fairly long crew cast. So I hope you're sitting comfortably. And um, who who was our winner? Jean. Jean was our winner last last month. Uh, do is Jean here? I don't see Jean. No. No Jean. Okay. Um, in that case, I need a volunteer to help me critique. Um, Olette. All that I've not heard from you. Oh, is that is that a, is that a, a eye smile or that? <laughs> no, it's just going to be somewhat <laughs> difficult because I'm still working. I'm you, still uh, you're work. doing some reading and listening. Okay, all right. Okay, I won't. I won't. Uh, I won't. I won't insist. I have um, another time, but yeah. yeah. Whenever you want, you just jump in. We're always looking to hear from from different people, different okay. people's opinions. Um, who who hasn't helped me with critique? It's looking like we've got all of our our usual our regulars on, which is great. But I want to spread spread things around a bit. Who, who have we not heard from? Who fancies having a go that hasn't? Okay then. All right. Who fancies having a go that has? Yeah, it's level with with the regular irregulars. That's the whole, that's the thing, isn't it? The usual suspects. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to get nobody. I'm going to get nobody. Okay. Not a single volunteer. Well, I'll do it, okay. but I was on recently, so I think someone else should do it. Well, I mean, yeah, I, you know, I don't want to sort of make people do things they don't want to do. Um, but yeah, if you if you're willing to help us, Karen, then we will take your help. Thank you. Sure. Okay, let's um, let's get a window open with. We'll start with portrait of the month. And we will share the screen. There we are. Okay. So let's have a quick look at what we've got. Interesting mix of different things as as always, which is nice. Let's jump in then. So first up, this from Arica. So we've got a, a concept here. It's like a like a broken angel, I guess. Um the the lighting is is spot on. Um I like the the pose. I think the whole the whole concept is all um executed well. I think my one one difficulty with it, and I don't know if this is actually there in real life or due to retouching, but where the edges of the wings are catching the light, it does make it feel like it's a bit cut out and stuck on. Um just a, a, a lot across the top of the the wing there um whereas elsewhere i think the the processing is is really nice um how do you feel about it karen 
I think it's beautiful and I'm sure it's very meaningful to a lot of dancers and um, you can see the the kind of pain in um, in the girl's face or or the you know um, the kind of strain of all of it I, th I think it's a really interesting um, kind of concept the only thing that slightly bothers me I can only really see one wing um, but uh, you know that's a minor thing. I I get the. That's get the, the the first thing. Yeah, I can I can see it. But when you when you pull back, it's. Uh, uh, but um, you know, I think it. I think it's rather lovely. It's got a kind of um, renaissance look about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, okay. Let me just see what's going on here. Black Swan. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So like it. Okay. This from Craig. Um, so this just instantly says these guys are in a band, right? I, I don't know exactly what the cues are that um that tell me that, but they tell me that. And this chap on the left here is the drummer. That's just I just looks like a drummer. Um and it is a local rock band. So there you go. Um what what is it, Karen, is what is it? Why, <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll go through later. But what is it, do you think? Is it just because we've seen pictures like this before? So it's it's the language, the the visual language that says that they're in a band, or you know, what what do you think it is that that gives me that vibe? Um so correctly yeah they've definitely got the attitude mm -hmm. i mean yeah they're, they're not uh this is not your you know firm of accountants is it um but yeah i, I need to i need to study what that is because it would be useful to use those things um the fingers sticking out of the pockets, that's what gives it away, is it? Okay. Hmm. Um, well, it's a style. Um, it's been done, it's been done a lot. I think it's done done here very successfully. Um there's nothing here that I would make big changes to. Uh I I guess if we want to get super picky, we've got a little bit of um glasses glare that yeah, I, on both of the glasses wearers, I would say the camera right eye, it's a little more intrusive than on the camera left. Um, but not to a not to a point where I would worry or do anything about it. I'm just wondering if you could play with the composition of the group a little more. Because this guy over on the far left is noticeably considerably taller than than the others. Um so maybe there's a way just to um, even that up in the composition. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, very nicely done. What do you think, Karen? Yeah, I believe it's, I had a look at the BTS before. Um, I believe it's an homage to a, a, a Beatles uh, album cover or a Beatles image. Um, so um, yeah. Mm hmm so maybe he's not so he's the drummer. To... Maybe the guy on the right's a drummer. No, 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 look, he's, he's the drummer. Oh, he's a drummer. He okay. Is... I was just if they were doing a literal uh a literal yeah. homage, it would be. I guess my only um my main comment is you've got um the smallest guy the furthest back. So you're you're and you've also got him very turned. Um mm -hmm. so it's kind of highlighting the fact that you've got a couple of um much bigger guys uh you know broader guys in the in the uh in the group i probably would have brought him forward and turned him a little less so that they were more even in size I'm with uh, you. That, that, that's probably my only comment i think it's i think it's well done yeah yeah very nicely done does does the job exactly Good stuff, Craig. Okay, Karen. 
Can't really critique your first... <laughs> okay, well, no, t t Tell me about this. So the, your first shoot with continuous light, what um, what did you notice was different about it? Uh, well, it's very, very easy compared with Strober, actually. It's just the second setup. Um, the My portrait probe entry was the first thing I ever shot with my, my NAN light. Um, with an optical snoop, and then we uh, we had about fifteen minutes before um, before my buddy David had to head out. So um, we uh, we we just pulled him into the next room, and I just bought this was a hundred year old um, cigar chair, and we didn't realise till we sat in it that all the um, <laughs> all the webbing's completely gone, so we sunk much lower than uh, than I had expected. But um, but we just played around with one light. And the chair, and um, uh, it, yeah, it was fun. It was cool seeing exactly um, what you're going to get straight out of camera. And um, although I shoot with strobes and modelling lights, it's still not really. It, it's still a little bit of um, uh, a little bit of a, a guesstimate to start with. Um, the modelling lights don't completely give you the same impression as continuous light, so. So yeah, that was fun. And the other thing I discovered, of course, is even though I had um, a reasonably fast shutter speed, one one twenty fifth of a second, it doesn't stop movement like um, like strobe. So in this particular shot, he'd actually moved his hand, and his hand was blurred. So I took his hand, um, his left hand from the previous shot, uh -huh. and, uh, and composited it back in. So, so okay. that was my, my big learning yeah. point from using continuous light. Uh huh. Yeah. So I, I was going to say, um, cause you're using it at 32% power. I would just whack it up to full power and then you can run your shutter, um, faster and then not have to worry so much about those kind of things. If you've got somebody moving around. Sure. Bit. I was using um, it with a um, with a Mola edition, so it was straight at him, and and so the reason that I okay. pulled it down a bit was was purely for um for his comfort. Okay. I wasn't feathering yeah. at all. Yeah. So I think uh, well, I think five hundred watts of um, continuous light blasting you straight in the face would be a bit uncomfortable. Nah. <laughs> Tell him to shut up. <laughs> Honestly. Um. Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, I, 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 I'm very pleased that uh, you've you've um, exp experimented and expanded with um, different techniques there. I love the setup. I, we do need to know: is he related to Mondo? <laughs> no, but he should be, shouldn't he? I think they have the same barber. <laughs> yeah. Um, one thing that jumps out at me, though, one tiny little detail, and it feels like it feels intentional and i'm curious to know I'm, I'm i'm sort of hesitating to ask you because if you tell me that it wasn't intentional and you didn't mean to do it and hadn't noticed it it kind of spoils it for me um <laughs> but the shoelaces what's going on there his shoelaces are all kind of pulled out like he's just quickly put his shoes on or he's about to take his shoes off i like, hadn't noticed ooh, it story but of course now I have. Yeah. It, it just gave me the sense of like, oh, there's something going on there. Um, and I, I wondered if it was trying to hint at something, but no, it was just a... No, I, I'm going to make up a backstory for that now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there we go. All right. Good stuff. Um, and yes, love the chair. Uh, it, I... I recently got rid of a, a similarly old chair that was similarly saggy and i just used to um fold up other bits of material that i would use as backdrops and tablecloths and stuff and just stick them in the base um so that people yeah, didn't did sink have, into it didn't have time for that and uh but luke's gonna make a plywood base for it so we're gonna take go. out these um <laughs> straps that are virtually on the floor when you sit on it and put um put a plywood base under the cushion doesn't have to be comfortable you see remember that um okay all right so let's move on to this from nico okay um nice Hello. super high thing going on here um 
there's is that there's something weird about the you see the tonality here and here on her shirt i don't know what's going on there um i guess that's just where we've got the flare coming in from the from those lights in the background um huge amount of flare uh but that's the that's kind of the purpose of the shot um it's a style i think it's done effectively here i'm curious to know if this um bit of flaring in here is added in post or if that's actually caught in in camera i guess we're gonna click through and and see is that well no that's not straight out we don't have a straight out of camera shot okay um well, actually is nico here i thought i saw nico, so nico I, uh, yeah i'm here hi afternoon hey. everyone hey so how how much of that is done in camera and how much of that is done in post? 80 camera, 20 post. I exaggerated. And, and is, I exaggerated is that, the the haze, yeah. Um I know there so there is, was, there was, but I just like I said, yeah, I exaggerated it more, of course, because it's ninety percent of all images are post. <laughs> no, but yeah, sure, kidding aside, but yeah. Of course, it's post, but I there was really a big flare already in them, um, on my camera. Uh, but you see that line that I'm tracing out there. What I'm not. Yeah, what I did. Is that? I did more. Yeah, I'm what, not sure. I it? didn't see it. Ah, okay. I didn't see it. Uh, I see it. I see it now, but I didn't see it. Uh, you know, I okay. didn't pixel peep my. Yeah, I didn't notice it. Okay, uh, Karen, how do you feel about it? Um, yeah, I mean, it's 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 a style. Uh, I wasn't sure about some of the editing around the hairline, but maybe it's the flare just blowing things out. But it looked like it was a bit cut out to me at the top. But um, um, but I, it, you know, it's I think it could just be the um, the backlight giving that effect. Um, she, oops. Oh no! Um, and also, it it's a. I'm, I was using a Sumicron like a ninety Apple, so most of my images will be like three D, even with whatever background the the subject is. Yeah. And are those lights in the background? Are they shooting through some like transloom or something? They had the. Uh, I had. I placed a sock, over. Uh -huh. On a on a Magnum reflector. Okay. It wasn't there. Yep. Four maps. Okay. Cool. Thank you, Nico. You, you, you used to give us much more detailed uh, BTS. Oh, huh? what? You used to give us much more detailed BTS, oh. Nico. Okay. <laughs> yeah, next time. <laughs> yep. I mean, at least the straight out of camera shot, it would be good so we can see what what okay. was done in post. Yep. Let's go on to this from Henry. Okay, so we've got... Well, it's a double portrait, isn't it, effectively? We've got an owl and we've got a person. I love the, the expression of this guy. It, it, this does look like he's smiling behind the smile that we're getting from the, from the owl. Um, love the super closeness of this and all the detail um there you go if you want to know how far you can crop into a head i'd say that's about that's about as far as you can you can take it um so let's read the owl is his spirit animal okay captured through the glass pane wow i mean that was that's some clean glass that you were shooting through there helen because that's a a nice crisp image. I, I, I actually cleaned it before I shot through it. Okay. So you got out the uh, the and Mr. Muscle or something? I got it out the Mr. Muscle from the car and cleaned the window, and then I put the uh, the lens uh, split on the window to uh -huh. uh, to not get uh, any dirt in the uh, any reflection in the dirt. 
if you want to come around and do my windows. <laughs> <laughs> So look at this. There's the colour, but oh my word, the black and white. Definitely the definitely the right choice there. So much more striking in black and white. Um, Karen, apart from um, jealous about how clean the windows are. Yeah, I mean, what a difference between colour and black and white, and the crop as well has made a made a huge difference. You've got rid of the um, the detail of the body of the owl and. So it makes makes for quite an intriguing image because at first glance, um, couldn't really figure out what was going on. And the top of the owl's head looked a little bit like teeth to me. Oh, hello. Um, in mm -hmm. the black and white. Um, yeah. At first glance. So uh, I think it's a fun image. I'm sure it would make a, a great kind of funny avatar for something like Facebook. Yeah, especially as, as that's like part of the logo of his, not the logo, but it's the thing associated with his business. So I yeah. think, um, it's, I think it's, that would work. It's quite a conversation piece. Yeah, definitely very recognisable. Good stuff. Thank you, Helen. Uh, let's get back there. And let's get on to this from Vale. Okay. I love this very, very busy image. Um, but the composition works nicely. So we're just drawn straight into this one central character that's looking straight down the lens. And everything else is just secondary, as it should be, the bride. Um, I mean, a bit of a nightmare to go and photograph in a room full of mirrors. But I think you've just embraced it um, well and done it perfectly. I, I'm not sure there's anything that I would recommend doing differently there at all. Um, I, I I probably would have refused to do it, I think. I'm not sure I would have wanted to take on that challenge. Um, how do you feel about mirrors in, in images, Karen? Well, I, I think they... Uh... Uh, it's not something I would particularly want to photograph, but I think you've done a fantastic job and um, not not just mirrors, but the mirror balls in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've had a good look. I can't spot you in any of the, your reflection in any of them. Yeah, it's... I don't see anything that off in the reflections, which is the the thing we're usually going to be worried about, right? Yeah, yeah, it, it's it's really well done. No visible light stands, nothing that shouldn't be there. I think is it available light? No, we've got all these lights. There's see there's lights here. Yeah, but I mean it she didn't bring in other lights. It's the the, the lights that were oh, I, I, up on it, the on the um I think it's like a um a photo booth at the fair. Yeah. So, so she's got some kind of yeah. Okay. She's always got some kind of strobe thing on top of her camera, and then strip lights that are in there. Yeah. There we go. Good stuff. Thank you, Vale. Let's move on to this from Claudia. I love the color here. This is beautiful. Um, so we've got some kind of, uh, it feels like a sort of fantasy book cover type thing going on here. Um, who is this character? The Hermit, the Purple Hermit. Um, Claudia, are you with us this evening, today, this afternoon? No. Okay. I think I'm, I saw I'm this in on, uh, in, on Instagram. Actually, it popped up in my my uh, my stream of the before and after. It's pretty cool. Uh -huh. It is. I, I was just keen keen to ask a bit more about the the story. Um. So I love the the processing, bringing the color into the same uh, the the sky color into the same as the the veil that the the I hermit think the veil is wearing. Was I red. Think. I think the veil was originally red, remembering from the BTS. 
oh, okay. Well, well, let's, there you go. And she's changed it completely. Yeah, I think it's a, a really cool shot, and I love a, the the um, alternate crop and and the uh, the color grade on it. Mm -hmm. It looks a lot a lot better here than there. The the color does the does the trick, I think. Um, okay, so it's a tarot character. Okay. There we are. Thank you, Scott. Or a reference to a Led Zeppelin album. Okay. <laughs> Who knows? Or both. Who knows? Karen, are you a Zeppelin fan? I am. There I can't you go. think what the uh, the the uh, cover would be, but um... Dancing Queen. <laughs> um. But yeah, I think I think it's a really strong image. Lovely stuff. Let's keep rolling. We have this from Scott. Um, so straightforward shot of a marshal. Um, I is that I don't know a marshal. Is that like a policeman? Yeah, marshals are marshals are for counties. Police are, are city based, marshals are county based in the US. Okay. Okay. So he's a, a, a police officer of some description, hence all of the kit that you've got on there. Um yep. so I think, yeah, the uh, the shot does the job. I would um probably just look to get him positioned or get the light, yeah, get the light positioned a little closer to camera so that it's hitting more into the face and less into the ear so i'm drawn to this very bright highlight on the hat um and this bright ear here more than i'm looking here in the middle of the face um so it's just a little bit of finessing the position of the light so that we're putting the the viewer's attention in the middle of the face it works beautifully all down here um we've got all the the gadgetry and obviously the the big contrasty writing is always going to draw the eye um, as well um and then the other thing i would just nudge the the framing just a little bit more to give him a tiny bit more room on camera left if possible um mandalorian tattoo there you go ah yes i see and a superman tattoo as well karen how do you feel about it yeah he looks like uh he looks like a very friendly guy uh i don't know if you've got any that also uh, perhaps were portraits that were more serious. And um, I'm trying to think of whether this would be congruent with his role. Um, but maybe, you know, community policing, maybe it's it's about showing that friendly side. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's, um, yeah, it's an interesting portrait. There we go. So, yeah, uh, Scott, it's... Bringing this light just a little closer to the camera will get a little less light. Or, or just turning it a little bit more as we're looking at it there anti-clockwise, if you see what I mean. There we go. Thank you, Thanks. Scott. Thanks for the feedback. Uh, let's move on to this from Robert. Okay, shot using a Kate... That's a Kate backdrop. Bloody hell, that's fairly intricate. Um, so, this this feel this feels like it's a composite. That's not. That's a, I can see a I can see a line going through here, the curtain. The curtains. It's a composite, Robert, isn't it? Is Robert here? I don't see Robert. Okay. Um Karen, you see it right? Yeah. Yeah, it looks it, it looks like she's been cut out and composited in. Um Yeah. And 
the direction of the light you you would have a, a either that or you've you know taken the light they've taken the light out of um out of right in front of her in post but it looks looks to me like she's been composited onto there yeah three lights one behind the backdrop um I, I don't see a link to a BTS. Um, yeah. One behind the backdrop, a strip box with the grid camera left. So that's what was giving us the light here. But the light on top of her head. Yeah. I'm I'm not sure I'm understanding what's going on there, Robert. Give us a give us a BTS post, because I definitely see some compositing going on there. Um, there is one. It's just not linked. So I'm gonna. I'm trying to dig for you guys. Ah, if you can drop it in the the chat here, we can go have a look. Yeah, I'm looking because I remember this. There it is. There we go. There's Robert's post. Thank you. Okay. So that's what's giving the hair light. That's what's giving the rim light. And then the whole thing is backlit to illuminate through the cape backdrop. I get it. Okay. I see there. And then okay. So this is shot like that. And then there's a separate shot of the backdrop that's been laid on top that's been boosted. The exposure boosted, and that's why we've got that artifact thing. Mm -hmm. I make sense. Okay. Thank you, Scott, for that. Okay, where were we? We were back here. Um, so yeah, if you you know, number one rule, if you're going to do that stuff, mask it out properly. Um, but yeah, interesting. Um, interesting idea to backlight a, a backdrop to get a bit of sense of realism of the light coming through. Mm -hmm. Um. Let's move on to this from Sharon. <laughs> I love the attitude from this. Um, beautiful choice of colours. That stool we've seen before, which I, I really um, very much like as well. Um, yeah, just simple, straightforward. Really, really nicely done. Um, Karen, how do you feel about the feet being cropped out? I personally wouldn't, but it doesn't bother me. In fact, I think I would have kept it in simply because she's got cool shoes. It's kind of like part of the look. Um, uh -huh. I think her expression is is great. Um, I like the colour choices. I like the wardrobe choices. And I think the, uh, the boots would have um, just been a fun contrast to the, the, um, the kind of satin skirt that she's wearing. There you go. So it's shot a little underexposed. And then moved to the post. But it all works. Yeah. I think, yeah, probably instinctively I would um leave myself a little more room in the crop in camera. Um but yeah. I don't think it's a problem in this case. Lovely stuff, Sharon. Thank you. Uh, okay, we know this is Christy straight away. Um, mostly because she's the only person with a large enough studio to have this much material for that. Um, I mean, lovely. I'm, I'm, I'm immediately going to shablitz here that we don't that it goes out of frame at the top. I'm like, you've got all of that space. Ah, I would have just 
<laughs> added that I would have cheated that post if if that were me. Um, but um, yeah, other than that, I love the simple um, monochrome color palette, um, the movement, all of it. Just just lovely. I, I think actually probably I would just go pure black and white on this myself. Um, but I like the color as well. Um, Karen, how do you feel about it? Yeah, it's beautiful posing. Um, just seeing that little sliver um, of, of just past a profile. Um, and she's got a lovely expression. Uh, is that all the actual fabric or did you extend it, Christy? I extended it, camera left. So you extended it out of the frame? Yes, I did. <laughs> Artistic choice. <laughs> it's got it's got a really painterly feel. It's got like that um, oil painting kind of feel about to me. Um, so it, I mean, because it, it just makes me think that there's uh, you know an assistant on a ladder, and their hand is just holding up that bit of. <laughs> that bit of cloth and that's why it's cropped out you know um but that's the bit that's that's been added in which is kind of funny Sorry. um yeah th this this definitely reminds me of um was there a series of cigarette adverts from the like late 80s maybe or early 90s was it silk cut did you go? You, I'm not sure Silk Cut existed in the States. Um, it's lovely. You can have ladders in the studio, just not take pictures of them. They're fine if they're behind the scenes. Galwa. No. I, well, well, we didn't have Galwa advertising over here in the UK, so I wouldn't know. Um, no, it reminds no. me so, a bit of um, is it Degar? Who used to photograph uh -huh. the dancers, that kind of painterly yeah. fit. Yeah. Although no, he didn't do any cigarette adverts, as far as we know. No. Probably was a smoker, though. Almost certainly. Okay. Thank you, Christy. We will keep moving. Um, another kind of expansive shot, but in a very different context here, in a much smaller space. Um, so this is Eric, stuck in a corner. Um <laughs> so Peter, are these move is this a movable wall and a and a real wall, or is it just two V flats hinged together? What's going on here? Uh it's actually two backdrops. The one on the left is a canvas, and the one on the right is uh like like a fold-up. It's rather big. Uh it's mm -hmm. a fabric with with the the structure in it. And I just place them to make a nice triangle corner. Uh -huh. um, there's BTS in the in the there's some pictures of how I shot it. So interesting because it doesn't look like he's you know it looks like he's pushing against a solid wall. Yeah, he he had to be very Wait. careful because uh, he was pushing too hard, and then you could see a, a dent in the in the in the canvas. Uh huh. Let's have a look. <clears throat> Yeah, I like the color grades definitely there rather than there. Okay. That's yeah. Sort of one. yeah, the one on the left is is a uh, is a rather big canvas backdrop, and the one on the right is just a like the pop up. Uh, yeah. Backdrop. It works. And there, there he gets the the Peter treatment. Yeah. With the white. Egg. So, what was the light overhead, yeah. Peter? Uh, it's a uh, uh, hundred centimeter deep octa. Okay. Just one light. It was really cool to to try out. That is cool. Lovely stuff. And yeah. Bring it back to this from Michaela. I, should this be in the, the probe for this month, maybe? It's all about using cutting lights. Um, 
Well, I put another no? one in the probe. Ah, okay. Okay. I, I was experimenting with different edge lights, and so I ended up with a couple of photos I liked. Okay. Um, so I like the, the concept here. I think you can go even stronger on it. So, like, go for full silhouette. I can just make out a bit of detail in the upper part of the, the subject's face. Um, and I'd probably be tempted to say go for a, a, a harder edge, um, so a more focused edge. Are you using a, a, a focusing spot attachment here or are you it's you you you're improvising with bits of cardboard and stuff right i well i was yeah i made a gobo out of the paper bag <laughs> <laughs> and shined a flashlight through it and then this is a okay. composite of like five different photos oh wow okay you're making life difficult for yourself doing it that way i'm sure there's there are easier ways to do that but okay i'm sure there uh, are that, that would make but okay. I like the triangle, but then I didn't like the neck exposed. So you'll see. So the first photo is just a flashlight through a green bag uh -huh. on the backdrop. Yeah. There's a slight green tint to it. Uh-huh. And then that was the silhouette that you could barely see the face through. Yep. Yeah. And then, and then that was the in. triangle of light, but I didn't like the neck exposed. And so then I put them all together. To I'm with you. Is he actually in handcuffs? He's not in handcuffs. He's in bondage and yeah. uh, <laughs> and a G-string. He was going to a party on Saturday night. <laughs> you have the most yeah, interesting you... friends, Michaela. <laughs> I do. <laughs> um Karen what's your take on it I think it I think it's fun I think it's uh it's definitely innovative and you know you've uh, you, you find such cool ways of playing around with what you have lying around rather than going and purchasing gear and I think that's so creative yeah well, B and H, they hate I it. did use I the edge light on the inner thighs is produced by a flex kit on the floor behind them there you go. <laughs> you, I mean, you can tell the quality of light here is far superior, right? <laughs> <laughs> far superior. It's, oh. it's $3,000 worth of light versus my $99 um, high lumens uh, uh, flashlight. Well, it works. It works. I, cool. I meant um, to submit a photo of my um, from my little gobo made out of a CVS paper bag, but now that I have a new phone, maybe somebody can help me with. I have a 15 Pro, and when I airdrop it over to my computer, it's a HEIC file. I don't know how to convert that to a JPEG. You open it. Drop it in. You go to export. And you choose to export it. Just choose export from the menu and uh, export as a JPEG. Do I have to open it in Photoshop or just... No, no, trying just to open do it, it on, your, on your laptop or your Mac. On my Mac? Mm -hmm. Through preview or something? Yeah. Okay. And then okay, I'll figure that out. Export Great. it as a JPEG. Okay, well, now I know. Make, you can make your photos send it as a JPEG also, your phone. I'll oh, show you later. Figure that out. Okay. <laughs> See new technology, and I'm like, oh, got to learn something new now, which is good. Or I'm I'm embracing if, it. If you have JPEG Mini, you can just drop it onto JPEG Mini, and it will come out as a JPEG. So that's another. I don't even know. Is another that an app? One. What's a JPEG Mini? JPEG is that Mini? an app? Yeah. Um, JPEG Mini. It's a it's a thing for compressing JPEGs. Very useful. Huh. So no, I know. You can send somebody like a a 4K JPEG and it comes in at like two megabytes or something rather than, I don't know, 20 megabytes. Uh, Thank you. Very useful. You're welcome. Um, I believe there's a crew perk. Um, there used to be. 
I don't know if there's still a crew perk. Um, have a look around on the crew perks page to see if yeah, JPEG Mini still has. Yeah, there still there is. There you go. Problems. Yeah, I to me it's one of those like absolute no brainers, especially for for your website. You know, you're uploading stuff to your website. You want it to be as light and fast as possible, um, but it doesn't deteriorate the quality noticeably. Um, anyway, or now we can use from... "Send It" by James Van Heath. Does that do the same thing? Well, I don't. I I mean, it sizes things directly for optimization for um, different things. And so you could put it for Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn or whatever. And I believe he uh -huh. did that all without degrading the quality. But I'm maybe maybe the yeah. So that was his whole idea to make it look as good as possible and make it size appropriate. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Okay, I will have to go check that out. Um, all right, thank you. Let's move on. Cambo is really enjoying the double. I thought I thought you had twins for a second there, Cambo. Um, <laughs> yeah. Double exposure. <laughs> I mean, it's not it's not unheard of. Um, this this woman has an air of being. Um, she looks like she might be a singer. She's she's somebody who's on stage. Is, is there anything to that? Or... Uh, she's, she's a model, and um, so she could be anything I want her to be. Oh, I see. One of those arrangements. I see. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but she seems like she's got some... Please don't take this the wrong way, but she seems like she has more character to her than your average model. Um, yeah, she's really I mean, incredible. I'm... Really incredible. Not sure what the role is. Yeah. The right way, but I, um, I love the love the color scheme. Um, I like the expression that you're getting from her here. I like how this works as a double portrait. Um, you know, if it were just two two shots of her looking to camera, then it probably wouldn't work uh, anywhere near as as well as it does. Um, as you're doing it in camera, you have to kind of commit to knowing what you're doing. Are you like shooting hundreds of them to to find something that you like, or are you going no. in with a definite plan? No, I'm very decisive, and so I, I I coach them because I go for a look, and then um I if I see something I I so so I take one picture, and then I have them change uh to a different look. And then I have them hold it and I take the next shot. And I typically, um, two shots are usually best, but I've done like in the last last month, I did four where I did my students. I did that graduation picture. I don't know if you remember it. And they looked like they were in the club dancing. Um, that was four. And so that was more layered, but this one I was able to separate them. Yeah. So it's all very, dis I, I before I even start taking pictures, I, I tell the person what I'm going to do so that it's not awkward when they're moving because some models will just move like crazy. And then I'm like, nope, hold that shot, hold that move before they move on to some mm -hmm. other interesting thing. Yeah. And then so I tell them what my vision is and what I'm trying to do. And so it usually works out really well. Pardon it my definitely does here. Pardon my naivete, but and my freshman self, but how are you combining these pictures? So I I photograph on the R5. And so on the R5, there's a setting, uh, multiple exposure. I think it's camera option five, um, where you go. And um, there's different options. There's a, an option where you can have it uh, continuously just take double exposure. Or you can, my, my, my choice, a, a better choice is, where you have it combine the double exposure, but also give you the single modes because it's nice to see. Sometimes the single takes are really beautiful on their own. Um, oh. And so if you choose that option, I, I, I have in the behind the scenes, I give a step-by-step -step on, on how I did it. So if you if you have an R5, you can find it and then you okay. can try it on your own. They're fun to do. If you okay. have someone who's very creative, um, they're really fun to do. Okay. I've yeah. only done one multiplicity and it was fun, but it was like back to back. But that's it. I don't have R5 yet. I'm saving. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So when you do, you let you give me a buzz and I can walk you through it. 
Oh, thank you. I would love that. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. I think well, someone is, really oh. hated this photo um, because there was a, a lookability of three, I think it was. And that's why my commentary there is um, you should say something when you give such tough criticism. Yeah, so, it's all right. Someone gave me my first one was one. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, so, it would be nice. I think um, I mean, the, the beauty about this forum is that people give you feedback, then you go and you work on it. And so if you there's something you really detest or hate um, to give a really low score, I think it's it's polite to say why you don't like it. So we can make them better because sometimes we're so close to our images and you don't really know, like we miss a few things because someone else has an, an eye and a critique to tell us what it is that they're saying that we didn't see. So Yeah, and, and, and it could be political. It might maybe, I don't know. Or it could be a yeah. I I don't agree with the lookability thing here. I uh, in portraits, I don't. Mm -hmm. I think this is absolutely beautiful. And one of the things I love is it's got like an old Hollywood look. Um, it's it's partly her expression, but it's also her hair, the 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 bangs or fringe with that that high straight cut, and then that headdress. It's got a very um, kind of nineteen thirties or forties Hollywood look. I think it's lovely. Thank you, Karen. I hope the three scorer is here. <laughs> you know, as odds are you guys that they're it. not. It's just somebody <laughs> leafing through images, putting scores on them, not understanding the purpose of the image. And I hate it too here in Portrait Track. I think it sucks. Yeah. Kimbo, I the think it's beautiful. What it reminds oh. me of is old world Hollywood. It doesn't look like a model at all. It looks like yeah. old Hollywood and I absolutely love it and if you ask me today I don't care about any other pictures you won ah! wow. it's a secret <laughs> just to say who you're voting for oh my god we don't even know she's in the poll I know <laughs> Michelle's I, just added her. I just added her there she goes <laughs> <It's funny. laughs> okay. oh that's funny um, so I'm 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 going to now massively contradict myself because of course we do have the poll and we do have a winner, um, mm -hmm. but I think that the 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 big distinction between portrait track and headshot track is that on headshot track we are teaching to a definite standard, so there is a there is a a, a large degree of objectivity on what is good and what is not because mm -hmm. we all know what you're trying to get to because there is the gold standard. And this is where you're aiming for. Whereas on portrait track, I, you know, I want you to do your own thing. Mm -hmm. So part of what I'm trying to do when I critique it is try to understand what were you trying to do and then how well did you do the thing you were trying to do? And that's got nothing to do with whether I like it or not. So I never put a, a, a rating on, on the images in portrait track because I think that should be you as the photographer that gives it the rating. Like, yeah. Why Honestly, you have Joe remove it. How good is the picture you shot according to your standards of what you should be shooting? That's what I'm more interested in on portrait track. So there you are. That said, we're going to vote and we'll pick a winner. So you know, there's my there's my um my hypocrisy for the day. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and there's behind the scenes if you want to see the original color. Aha. Uh -huh. It's very flat. Yeah. yeah. So you just boom, yeah. popped it up a bit more. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Subtly, but just brought it into balance. It works. Lovely stuff. Okay. What's this, Christie's person? Being an artist requires a bizarre balance between not giving a fuck and giving lots of fucks all at once. That's about yes, it. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, it's choosing it's choosing what to give a fuck about isn't it that's the that's the skill of the artist um i mean i i don't know if i don't know if anyone saw i did a thing on youtube on friday and then got into a a little spat with a troll um who insisted that everything i, I said was i i read all of that how did that end 
Did you guys meet and fight? What happened? Oh my god! <laughs> no, so so the people that run the channel said, um, I mean, they as it turns out, he has been known to do this in the past on other people's videos. But the people on the channel said we've asked him to make his own video so he can show everyone his way of doing things, but he yeah. won't show anyone any of his work. It's like, okay, where where yeah. do you go with that then? You know, um, he's just going to criticize yeah. and never actually. I loved it. I loved it when you said you obviously feel very strongly about this. I'm like done. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. I I mean, yeah. I I I hope his I hope his life is not as miserable as it sounds. And people that go go putting you know unhelpful low comments on things. I hope they're not as miserable as as that makes them sound. Um, and I hope they go and make some of their own work and that makes them happy. Yeah. Um, genuinely. There we are. Let's get on to this from Orlet. Okay. So I love the the simplicity of the, the composition here. Um, I love how the model is placed on that line there um, with this band around the, the... Is that the train of the dress or is she standing... She's standing up on a stool, right? <laughs> Yeah, um, so the story behind this, uh, yeah, so the story behind this one is that I I, I saw an inspiration um, dress, and um, and so I didn't know what material that they were using with regard to that dress, but this this is part of my boudoir um, images, and but when I saw the 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 I, I, the lower part of that inspiration. I had to go out and, and find material. I actually made this. Um, so I <laughs> kind of like, it's more organza and um, um, what's this of, and, and brocade. And mm -hmm. I, this front piece here um, is actually on some vinyl. I kind of glued it to the vinyl because that's a heavier piece, but I wanted to get some distinction and get something close to the um close to the inspiration but yeah so it's just layered material um and with the material around her knees um that's just basically organza and it's tight in the front since we work it on the back i, I love it because it, it kind of plays with the perspective um it sort of flattens things out and makes that yeah it it just makes me look again um and challenges the the assumption of is she standing is she sitting is that a real wall is that yeah lots of raising um nice yeah. and simple yeah Div thank you she yes yeah, and she is standing on the um, apple box of course good old <laughs> apple boxes there we go um karen what's your take on it? You say it's simple. I don't think that's that looks simple at all. I, I would never know what to do with all that fabric. I think that's a triumph with the fabric. Um, In terms of just it's, you know, it's just like simple composition. Yeah, yeah. but it, it's Metrical. beautifully done. I think my only thing is, I I think I'd like to have seen that cropped closer. Um, she's got. Uh, she looks fabulous. She's got a very beautiful um model there and her hair is that her her hair um that's the yeah that's her hair she has braids and um for this piece she pushed she pulled it up and put it in a bun on top of her hair i mean her braids are down her back so that gave her yeah. the... well I, I think i'd like to have seen it cropped closer um so we we get to see more of that detail but other than that it's you know it's um it's beautifully done how see yeah. So how how would I crop it closer? Well, that, I... that's that, that's just a a personal thing, but yeah. I would I would say from uh, coming in from the top left, maybe okay. uh, uh, at forty five degrees, um, just a little way, so it stops closer to the top of her head, and maybe lose a little bit of the detail on the left, maybe so it stops just just before the um, that uh, okay. other little piece of fabric that that's. Uh, coming out from the dress but I just think it's it's she's she's got such a lovely expression and everything that it, we would see more of that if it was cropped a little closer 
to something more like that. Yeah. Uh, but maybe showing, you know, some of the, um, you obviously put a lot of effort into the, into the, the dress, but I think it stands up well without necessarily having that, but she's, she's got lovely lines and everything. Thank That's you. a personal, personal thing. Yeah, no, thank you very much. Okay. Let's move on to this from Paul. Okay. This looks like a familiar, uh, familiar setup for, for me here. Um, so we've got the window light. We have a table. Um, I love the simplicity of the, uh, the colors here. Um, great choice for the subject as well with blue eyes. Um, lighting's on point. Uh, yeah, nothing, nothing really I would do differently here except maybe give that um either digitally or actually give that tablecloth a little bit of uh a steam or an iron uh just to get some of the the wrinkles out i think if we if we're gonna have wrinkles in it like try and get them to at least kind of mirror what's going on with the um the dress that the subject's wearing so that they're all it's kind of bunched up all in one direction if you see what i mean um, rather than just being a bit random. Um, so, yeah, a quick steam before you throw it over the table or a, not too much work. It's fairly easy to do um, in post just to take those out. Um, there you go. Um, Karen, what's your impression here? Yeah, I love the um, limited uh, colour palette and the very shallow depth of field. Um, it's got very um, classic look to it i think it's it, i think it's nicely done i just have one the... question did paul break mm -hmm. into sharon's studio to shoot this <laughs> because this could go into sharon's work too <laughs> there you go no not likely because sharon uses natural light <laughs> i know and I don't do many table portraits, but I think I'm going to have to, like, start that. Oh, Sharon, you're here. <laughs> there we go. It was the blues, All guys. Right. Thank you, Paul. We move on to this from Slava. So we, we saw this uh, uh, last week, um, I think, or the week before, um, and talked about it briefly. Um, I love this in black and white. I like the the shape, the composition. Um, it's all about the the different textures there with the super industrial stool, um, and then the the soft satiny dress. Um, yeah, I mean, not much more to to add here. Um, nicely composed, nicely lit. All good, Karen. Yeah, it's got a quality of um, like a marble sculpture in a way in black and white, a kind of Rodin or something like that. Um, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's beautifully done. Lovely stuff. Thank you, Slava. Then this from Kirsten. Um, so I like the, obviously... Well, maybe not. Obviously, I like the the use of the table to create uh, uh, something for the subject to lean in on. That creates a bit of um, connection with the viewer. Her eye feels slightly off to me. Am, am I, or is it just slightly blurry? Is it slightly missed focus? Is it my eyesight, Karen? I. I'm not I'm looking at it on Zoom, so I need to look at it in the um yeah. it, it's, it just doesn't quite feel like I'm connecting to her as much as I want to. Um but yeah, other than that, yeah, it, yeah, it, it's slightly blurry. Thank you, Ellie. I'm not sure what's going on there. Um other than that, there's a few tiny little details that I would just try to tighten up. Um one is a simple thing in post just down the bottom edge here the edge of the table is just there i would just extend it so it goes completely out of frame that just keeps it a little neater the other one it's a little harder to do when people wear these big bangles and then they move their hands around um 
yeah it, it looks a little awkward the way they cut into the the skin it would be nicer if they were standing um a little differently that one's a difficult one to manage um and probably well, it's beyond what i could do in in post-production um for sure um but i love the overall feel of it um and uh the pose and the expression it's how do you feel about it Karen? yeah someone's commented the joan collins vibe and i totally see that there <laughs> Oh well, then it probably would be a bit blurry if it was Joan Collins, wouldn't it? I, mean, you know, <laughs> I guess my only thing, I would, I would perhaps burn down her uh, camera left hand very slightly. It's it's a little brighter in her face, but um, but no, I think it's a. Uh, other than that, it's not much I would change. Let's have a look. Michelle, yeah, Apple Watch. You know the the. the... So the thing with people having uh, a watch visible in a photograph, as a photographer who makes a living from taking pictures, I have contradictory feelings about it. Anyone who's wearing an Apple Watch now in a year's time, it's obviously going to be out of date. It's going to be last year's Apple Watch. So maybe they need to come in and get new pictures. Maybe that's a good thing. But I do think... Yeah, they, they date so quickly, whereas anything more kind of a classic watch has a much longer lifespan. Um, I kind of don't like that idea of being able to look at a portrait and say, that was taken in 2024. To be able to look at it and say, that was taken in the 90s or that was taken in the 2010s, fine. But when it's so specific, and I think technology like that does make it a bit too specific so i tend to unless the the subject insists um i tend to get them to take um apple watches and fitbits and all of those kind of things off but if they've got a classic watch i don't mean like an expensive classic watch necessarily i just mean a more kind of classic watch um i think they work better what do you have feelings on those kind of things karen um it, well yeah i normally get people to take um take off modern uh modern watches but um i wear i wear a fitbit so i get it i have got some very expensive watches that i never wear now and have no uh all need new batteries so most people now wear um wear you know fitbits and gamut garmins and apple watches what's your step count for the day uh, very low. <laughs> What's very low? Uh, not much. Well, I barely moved today, so uh, three thousand six hundred and fifty-eight. Okay, okay, all right. You know, the day's not over yet. The day's young. You might go out disco dancing later. You never know. <laughs> yeah, I would hate to think what mine is. I haven't left the house, so we'll see. Um, let's come on to this from Ellie. Okay. Um. This has got a different feel from uh, a lot of uh, the other work we've seen from Ellie. Um, I love the simplicity here. Super high key, over, like intentionally overexposed on the face, but I think that adds to the simplicity, keeping the the attention really the silhouette of the black dress and then the 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 shape of the the material, which is lit beautifully. Um, it all works. The expression works with the pose. It works with the movement and the lighting and processing. Um, yeah, really good, fairly. Karen, how do you feel about it? Yeah, yeah, I think it works really well. And um, I know when I um, originally studied composition, there was the idea that if you had someone so far... Um, into uh, so far over in the frame and they were looking towards the outside of the frame that it could look uncomfortable but uh, that looks that looks great i guess because she's looking back and it's got a, a lovely joyous feel about it i feel cheated now the the scarf is all entirely generated um yeah. in photoshop okay sorry it was I mean... with a... hmm it was boring without it. Are you, okay, yeah. I mean, 
Oh God! I, I, we, yeah, I'm gonna hate. I'm gonna hate the point where we have to start putting in rules. But I think <laughs> so. For me here, the, the the scarf is such a central part of the picture that Pretty if that's too. not a photo, mm, you know, it, it definitely becomes at least collage, doesn't it, rather than photography. Um, Whereas, you know, if you're using generative fill to kind of extend the background or something, I think I think that's a different case. Um, but, yeah. Um, I mean, I, I, I get what you're... I get why why you've done it. Um, but then Ellie's style is to, to use um, a lot of the yeah. uh, fantasy elements and everything and bring them in. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it's it's going to be a thing that that becomes more and more um, more and more pertinent to. Um, oh well, yeah. See, Slava, you're right. Like we, you know, I don't want to draw any lines, but uh, yeah. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. Um. Yeah, like the, 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 there's nothing wrong with doing. There's nothing wrong with doing all kinds of different things. Um, I'm just thinking from the point of view of what what I can help you with. Um, I de I, yeah, I definitely can't help you with <laughs> AI because I'm not as clever as AI. Um, so yeah, hmm, hmm. I suppose for me it would be about. Yeah, how how if you're presenting it as something that is a photograph, does it look like it's been cut and pasted? And here it doesn't. So, yeah, um, it's not only uh, cut and pasted; it's built from like tiny little bits and pieces. It was the way it was generated. Mm. Like it did a little yeah. bit, like it was a tiny little bit, and I was growing and changing it until I got this shape. And melding it and mm. uh, liquefying it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, in terms of what I would regard as a sin is where you can see where the work has been done, and that's never. That doesn't matter whether it's AI generated or just you know two photographs from the same session blended together, a la Kate Middleton. You know. If we can see where you've done the work in post production, then it's kind of failed by making itself visible, and that's not the case here. Um, so, yeah, hmm. we we will no doubt talk further on this subject um, as time goes on. Um, well, what I want are. to know is when she shot the girl, was the intent when you shot the girl to then generate the the cloth afterwards? Like, was it or was it like you attempted with a piece of cloth and it just that's didn't come back to it or that type of thing? Uh, that's why she's standing like that because I didn't have a I didn't have a scarf. It didn't have the one that would be right for this. So she's standing. She's holding her hand and waiting for it to happen. <laughs> see, I, I yeah. I mean, I see where you're going, Vera, with that question, but I, I, I'm, I'm not sure that intent is is necessary either. You know, um, me neither. Sometimes you, you... I have an image, and I decide that later that I wish I had this in a studio, and then I add something. In. Yeah. yeah, like a thing happens when you happen to be pointing a camera in the right direction you totally get the credit for that for having been there with the camera whether you intended that thing to happen or not nobody ever needs to uh, to know um and yeah you can shoot something intending for it to be a you know a riot of color and then decide actually it works better in black and white um something that you know further back in in photographic technology you wouldn't quite so easily have been able to decide after the fact it kind of was what it was um so we're already able to we're all comfortable with that level of technological interference i think i don't think there's i don't think there's anyone here who would insist that if it's going to be black and white it absolutely must be shot in black and white and cannot be altered um so yeah there we are anyway
anyway something for us to work out as we go along no yeah. doubt how much yeah. we're comfortable with um Karen, it comes to that bit where we have to decide what's going into the poll. Yeah, and um, so Claudia. Claudia's Led Zeppelin Absolutely. tribute. Uh, <laughs> and, ooh, oh, hold on, and I clicked the wrong button. That's a poll. There you go. And then, yeah, oh, it's just tough. Um, well, okay. Let's do uh, Shamboa then, because it's definitely not worth a three, so. Sorry? The uh, Shamboa. The, the... There we go. Sorry, Shamboa. Sorry. Shamboa. It's, it's definitely not a three. So let's get that in there. Okay, I'm just sitting, did that actually, there you go, now it's clicked. So Cloud is in the poll, Campbell is in the poll. Um, we are going to go. I'm liking Craig's group portraits of the bands. And I think, I mean, I think Henning's going to, I think this is Henning's three months in a row <laughs> that he's in the poll. But the, the smiling wine merchant with his owl gets a vote from me. So let's see. The finalists are these four. There we go. So uh, in terms of the portraitist award, we've got a double portrait, we've got a double portrait, we've got a more than double portrait. This could also be, well, this is natural and available light. This is also off an off-camera off -camera eye. Off-camera eye line. Um, yeah, this is natural available light here. This, I believe, is a one light. So there's all kinds of categories that these could go into. So hopefully you find some inspiration Um there um there yeah uh, so sharon's pointing out claudia also did a lot of work with ai um yeah i mean i i i said i think when when you're using a generative fill to you know just extend the background essentially here there was a there was a bit of railing that she took out and replaced with extending the foliage that was that was there right um to me that's a that's a different thing to adding in a central element of the picture um that's entirely generated um not to say that there's anything morally or or whatever wrong with it it's just in the context of um the portrait track where we talk about portrait photography and we're trying to improve portrait photography. If the central element is generated by AI, then it's much more about post-production than production. What we're going to talk about. Um, that's where I'm sort of, that's where I'm, I have difficulty with uh, how to talk about it in the context of this webcast here. If you see what I mean. You're, you're not talking general validity. You're talking about the pedagogy of what we're trying to do here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In in general, like if you want to, you know, make portraits of people by carving them into matchsticks with a scalpel, I think that's really cool. But like, <laughs> I'm not going to critique it on here because I I don't know the first thing about it, and I you know what I mean. It, it, that's not what we're here for. Right. Um, but yeah, if what whatever floats your boat. I'm I'm cool with in terms of your creativity and I think the problem is if we have rules then you know are we going to enforce them are we, like am I going to have to check every picture like you know have you really not used any AI on this I don't want to get into that either um but yeah I don't know it, it's a thing that we will work out as we go along right um 
Anyway, I'm going to stop my share. I'm going to set up a, a little poll somehow. Um, I'm going to, in the meantime, give you all a quick break in some breakout rooms. And I will see you back here in a minute or two. There was nobody in my room, so I came back. Oh, <laughs> nobody there. Do you want me to put you into a room? Are you sure? <laughs> I, yeah, I can put you into a room. I'm going to move you to a room. Who, who do you want to speak to? <laughs> I don't you care. Can... Scott. <laughs> I'll put you into room. Oh, where's Scott? Where's Scott? Hold on. Room three. Scott's in room three. Move to room three. There you go. Thanks. Hey, James. Hey, if you go toss me in a room, I went from my phone driving home from traffic to back at home now in front of a computer. So, where you're not coming up on my list of people. Where are you? Oh, there you go. Um, I will assign you to room two. I'm going to call you back shortly anyway, but yeah, go say hello to some cool. folks. There you go. You're back, James. Here they come. All right, folks. In the chat there is a link. We're doing an external poll because I don't have access to the internal one, because I'm not Peter Hurley. Um, click on that link and go cast your vote. I will share my screen again to remind you of what's available. Bless me. Excuse me. There we go. So we've got Kambua, Claudia, Henning, and Craig, those are your options.
Ivan, do we have a badge? We do, we do, we do. Uh, I just put it back in. Thank you, Christine. In. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I always put that at the very top, but yes, if you're if you're not in the crew cast at the very start, you won't see it. Um, but yeah, if if I'm not able to, you can always ask somebody else who was there to repost it for you. There you go. Um, there, there, and there. How much longer do we need to get everyone to vote, do you reckon? You don't see the poll. Uh, I'm going to drop the link again. There's the poll. It's an external link. Apologies, but that's that's where we are. Apologies. <laughs> Apologies. Hey. Oh my god. That's worse than one of mine. Oh dear. I heard I'm you pronounce that. it that way, and then I came up with it there. <laughs> Uh, um, I, I had a Frenchman in fits of laughter today with my one joke that I know in French, which I've used on every French speaking person I've ever taken a picture of. Um, it, it was very, very gratifying. You know, when you're like, I've got, I've got one chance here. I've only got one thing that's going to possibly make him laugh and it absolutely killed. Yes. Perfect. Um, can you translate the joke? Does it translate? Um, it, it, it's it 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 only works in French because it's a it's a wordplay. Um, but there, yeah, there you go. I've got two jokes in Italian, one joke in French, and one joke in Portuguese, and that's it. Um, everybody else, they just you know, that's how I end up with loads of pictures of people looking really kind of serious because that's it. <laughs> anyway, um, I think we've uh, I think we've got enough votes or you've had enough time to vote i'm going to cast <clears throat> a vote so that i can see the results um but then i will discount my vote from the total and ivan do there you think we... that we, this will be able to be cast on the the thing so we can those of us who unfortunately came in late are able to hear the critique yeah yeah this is being this is live this is live on on youtube so it will be it will be there okay um if it's live, that means it's being recorded um so i'm discounting my vote from the total um and even even with my vote discounted from the total we have a fairly fairly clear winner here um let me just share my screen again so that i can do the big reveal the winner is with a lookability rating of three, Cambua. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> so Congratulations, Cambua. <laughs> oh my gosh, do you know? I almost didn't post behind the scenes because I was a little crushed. And I was like, oh, I guess I'm not gonna win. So that's it's interesting how I just said, oh no, I'll just post. Yeah. Thank you. Go with Thank your you gut. Guys. That Always person's really obviously really. a moron, so it's okay. <laughs> Congratulations. Hi, You're welcome. I told you you'd win. Thank you, <laughs> Michelle. You're awesome. Thanks. Or it's How not a post credit process. Uh, I'm two for two. I think Henning, I called Henning last month, and I'm new to the group. Henning won, and now. You won. Yeah. Now I need Who's going to win next? Yeah, Who's going to win next? I, one? Picture. Really I know, picture. Right? I know. It's crazy. But with that, it, with that in mind, because I would say it might be worth mentioning to them of like possibly taking the lookability thing off the portrait stuff. I agree. Yeah, maybe. Um, or the 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 stoic in me says that it should stay there as a reminder to us that it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks 
Oh, that's true. Yeah. You know? And what you said, what was Have that it, saying again? And anytime anyone votes, if somebody votes and says 10, you have to react to that the same way you would if somebody votes and says one, i.e., that's your opinion. Right? Mm -hmm. They're both they're both they've got the same validity. Somebody saying, I think your your work I is. I think there's a system. lot of complaints about lookability. I don't know if they're just being stubborn about it. I don't, I don't think anyone likes lookability. As a well, as a time out. Time out. I'll say I like it. How about that? Do you like it? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. Just to bring us back to Ivan's original point. <laughs> well, well the funny gonna, thing we talked for about, me, about the AI thing. What 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 is that going to do going forward? You say you're still thinking about it? Yeah, I don't vote that way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, all right. Yeah, so I'm, I'm just I'm really really not fond of creating rules. Um, and so the you know the rules for the contest here are as minimal as they can be. It has to be workshop this month. Um, you know that's it. So it's doing the job of getting you to go out and shoot new work. Beyond that, I really want to keep it as open as possible. But I think you know we we know or we have feelings about if somebody wins with a an image that we don't feel is done in a way that we would like to work, then, you know, whatever, like, good luck to them. Um, it, uh, yeah, it's it's part of it. If I start putting rules in, then I'm going to start have to policing the rules. And, and, and I don't want to be policing the rules. Because then what are we going to, you know, where are we going to go with that? As soon okay. as you start doing that start intentionally trying to get around the rules to try and get okay. something for nothing. Right. Yeah. I was just you wondering, know. like, you know, would there be like, these are the AI portraits and these are the real portraits or whatever. I don't know. I didn't know if that was. If um, was I mean, but where, where would you, where would you make the distinction? You know, if you've used a little bit of uh, generative fill to correct a bit of skin imperfection, is that's AI. You're right. 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 You're right. Yeah. So like, unless tough. you manually draw in every pore and every little bit of downy hair on the skin manually, then you're already using a bit right. of AI. Right. Teeth so whitening. Uh, yeah. It's all. Right. Yeah. Okay. I was yeah. just wondering. So when I put my yeah, but but Ivan, the first picture, mm -hmm. the dancer with the wing. We were talking about this in, yeah. in our group. That yeah, that was a composite as well. Yeah. and no one said anything about that. <laughs> so right, yeah, I, I I don't know where the balance is with regard to what can be added to a photo and what shouldn't be added to. Because to me, it was similar. The girl adding the scarf and the one that adds the wing. It, to me, it was similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's absolutely, absolutely valid point. Um, the only, the only thing that I will say in defense of me calling out one and not the other is it occurred to me when I looked at one of them, and it didn't occur to me when I looked at the other, and that's not based on any logic or reason. It's just, it just occurred to me, um, which I think is valid, but obviously entirely subjective. Um, so that's why I can't make a rule around it, can I? Because <laughs> you know, I think also the, just basically depend on the composition. When you look at the ballerina, you look at it first as one. Um, you don't look mm -hmm. at it as an add-on. At least I didn't see it was an add-on. And um, with the scarf, when you look, when you look at the behind the scenes, you can clearly see. Um, that it mm -hmm. that it, that was that it was an add on. Did a good job adding it on though. Yeah, it's not a photo anymore. Like it's not a photo. It's not made with a camera. It's an artificial object added to the image. It's not a photograph. It's not in the raw. That's how you would see yeah. it from photojournalistic point of view. Like 
if you submit this, then this is like, it's fake. For, it's not a photo, it's, it's artificially generated. No matter if I do it with Photoshop or if I do it with whatever, it's not, but it's not nothing wrong with it. If, if, if that's accepted in this space, then it's fine. But in some spaces- I have that debate with myself all the time though, when I'm retouching people and stuff and, I'm, and people will say about the AI photos, I was like, but it's not real. What we do is real. And then I'm like, you know, my goal is always to make someone not look that much different than themselves, you know, with it there, a bit of a capture. But at the same time, there's there's digital elements. When we go and we put it into Capture One and we're going and brightening up the highlights and we're darkening down the different things. Like we're not all just having our images just be, you know, as if it was just straight, you know, uh, of what the raw image that came in. And with that, it's all as kept. Peter always says, you know, the, how the man in Japan versus the man in wherever it is that Capture One is made and all the different things, how it reads it. Um, it's tricky because it's it's none of it is analog now. It's all digital. I think it's also well, depends depends what the right. ultimate aim is. So if if you're creating a piece of digital art, if it's, a, a you know, an album cover or uh, the cover of a book, there may well be elements that you want to bring in, but you're starting off with a concept and that's part of the concept that you're creating, but the photography has mm -hmm. to be central to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, the, 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 if it were analog, you would still have to make decisions about how the film is exposed and how the film is, is processed and how the print is made that would lead to different interpretations of the scene that you captured you know you could make it more contrasty less contrasty you might be shooting it in black and white you might be shooting it in color all of those things your decision to crop i mean instantly right you you've you've edited out something that was there by cropping um so that that's always going to be part of the part of what we do it's selective the photojournalism rule thomas i mean in photojournalism it's clear and that's great if you're having a photojournalism contest, you cannot edit. And that's as it should be because we're attempting to present reality as seen through the the lens. Um, but that's not what we're doing here. Um, you know, I, I don't mind if it's not real. Um, but yeah, I guess we'll just have to kind of keep feeling our way and keep discussing what we're comfortable with and not comfortable with in the same way that we've gotten maybe some might say overly comfortable with some kinds of retouching um and that will probably come back around and we'll start doing less of it and let the machines do the retouching um in future and we'll stick to the unretouched stuff i don't know um but yeah i mean i didn't want to say that's wrong so that i hope nobody got that this way it's like i is i'm not judging it I just mm -hmm. think it's not if if it is it's a digital art, but it's not for me. It's not the photograph because it's an element in there what wasn't there. So, but yeah, I'm not judging if it is good or bad. That everybody needs to decide themselves. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree with Thomas. I I agree with you. Um, but I but I, you know I and I know sometimes I I I want to see how to get better. Right. And making me making or adding a, another element to make a, an, an image look better doesn't mean that, again, that that's real. I, I like to think that I, I like to be part of, you know, part of the purest, um, you know, category when it comes to portraits. Um, so, you know, as you said, a little simple simplicity for me, it's fine. <laughs> I'm OK with that. But I, I just want to grow and learn my craft. For sales questions, press one. For activation questions, press two. For <laughs> please select your topic. Damn. Hey, Dan, you... activation Dan. Activation Dan. Press one. Dan, for questions on AI, press four. But he's muted. He's not. Um, yeah, I mean, so I, I think that that's what's So I'm here because I want to, to, to learn how to um, perfect my images um more from a pure standpoint so but th so this is an interesting point or like from my point of view something that i do feel strongly about is 
if you use AI retouching, so I'm talking about uh, you know an Evoto, not not um, like where we're adding generated elements like in uh, the the image with the scarf or the image with the wings, but where we're using AI retouching to get rid of skin imperfections, hair, those kind of things. Um, I feel that if you go to those straight away, it does reduce your learning as a photographer. Because certainly when I was doing my headshot portfolio, what was the thing that made me learn to go and fix the hair before I took the picture? It was spending hours having to fucking retouch it. Like, oh my God, this is going to be easier if I just spot it first. Like if I just get the colors straight before I take the picture, I won't have to spend all that time fixing it in post after. Um, does that make the picture more worthwhile? Well, not really. But if you are in a situation where you are, you know, wanting to impress your client straight away by presenting them something that's close to the final straight away during the session, then the less you're reliant on retouching, the better. Um, but at the same time, I totally get it. If you've got 100 pictures to retouch, bring on the bots i mean yeah i'm not going to sit here for, for three days retouching the pictures let me load them into a program and push a few buttons absolutely you yeah, know well, I, I don't uh, have e photo but um so it was mostly photoshop but i i still think that you know there is a need to just get it right in camera so i mean that's your best shot um, and then, yeah, I don't mind retouching the, the, the face and I don't decrease the size of people or anything like that. And I tell my clients that before, before I take them and, you know, if we're matched fine, we're not, that's, that's fine too. But, um, you know, but I, I'm not saying that from a Photoshop standpoint and then just correcting, you know, blemishes and things like that. I'm okay with that, but <laughs> I don't know, I just adding all of these other outside elements that didn't come with the image um, is is my my question with regard to photography. But, so so how do you feel about color grading then? Because those aren't the colors that you photograph that picture with. So you add you're adding your your art to it by color grading it to. Uh, like that picture, um, I think it's Claudia Hogg with the purple. That was her, yeah. was her picture. Yeah, that was all color yeah. graded. And um, I loved it. I just, you know, I don't think, and I, I think that you can take an image and, and, and then enhance it. You don't have to add by color, by adding color, by doing th things like that. Um, by adding like scarves that weren't there before or wings that weren't there before. I think it becomes digital art. That's that's how I think of it. Yeah, yeah I mean, color grading, I, mean, I think it basically depends on the image. I, you know, I don't color grade most of my images, but sometimes uh, there were a few that I said, oh, let me just try this filter. And um, and it came out, it, it, was, it was beautiful, but I didn't add another item. It's, you know, that's, that's my... That's my hardcore issue with um, with AI stuff. So, I mean, it's the, the image is what it is, um, but to enhance it by adding elements that weren't there um, is it's where I have the, that's my concern, but. Jo Jonathan, you've got your hand up. Huh? Jonathan. Yeah, I just wanted to chime in real quick. There's a, obviously these debates have been going on for a long time. Uh, it came up with the film and the digital, obviously that went on for a while. But here in this group, you're looking at practical elements and being able to cr critique more of the practical elements. That's your focus here. Now there are other groups, obviously not here, but in other spaces, who are into critiquing the digital art. You've got photography and you have the art side. So in most cases, 
that's that, I think that should be the focus is that's what you want. You want people to go out and shoot practically real things and get that get that base knowledge. And what what your point was earlier was a valid one about people coming into the space now who didn't slave over Photoshop for three hours doing an image. Honestly, no one cares how much time you spend on something. You're mm -hmm. the only one that cares how much time you spend on, on something, whether it's your clients or someone else or anyone looking at your art, no one cares how much time you spend on it. But for the focus of this group and in this space, I think you should. Pra practical elements. Yes, there is going to be retouching and there's going to be everything to produce your your beautiful portraits, but you are practical based from what I've witnessed so far, obviously, with in the, the ones that I've attended so far, because uh, you, you don't really have to debate that because it is, it is art, it's digital art. There's nothing wrong with it, but with what I'm gathering your focus is, it, it's more of the practical element. And I think that's, I, I don't, see a problem with a line being there you know with with what you're trying to accomplish in this group because uh -huh. you we're not you know i don't believe that if that line is there you're not saying don't don't stop creating at all don't keep creating but and i just got i've got silly views because i am a photographer and an artist and creative so you know, a lot of stuff. Yes, I do create other stuff, but I'm not going to bring it here to show you to critique because, you know, obviously. So that I just that's, that's my point. What we do in the group, I think that's a, that's a useful point, John. Like, yeah, if if the group's focus is portrait photography, and you bring in other styles of photography, we might all love it. But the you know it's not really the place to be showing your street photography, let's say. So similarly, it would not really be the place to be showing um, digital art. But where the line is, that's that's the debate. Um, Robert, you've got your hand up as well. Everyone's being polite. You can just jump in. Robert. Oh, hi, how are you doing? No, I just I was actually I missed my critique and I was and I and I started to listen to it, then I jumped back on. Um, cause I, in the beginning, everyone thought it was a composite, but it's not a composite. It was the girl with the Kate backdrop. So I think that line might've been, I added a little, um, kind of color grading to make it a little warmer and maybe that had something to do with it. So I was just defending myself okay. <laughs> and okay. I didn't put the link. I didn't put the link in cause I didn't, I didn't know I had to put the link in. I put it in the, in that group chat. I put a, put the, put the, okay. uh, behind the scenes. But going back to the AI if, if stuff, you, I, what's that? Yeah. No, going back to if, the if AI you put stuff. It, we can go. Sorry, go ahead. But going back to the AI stuff, what we were talking about, um, I, I agree everything I think should be done in camera, but there's always going to be some elements that you throw in. As long as it's not overly AI, I, I don't find anything wrong with that. No, so that's my that's opinion. The, and everybody has a opinion. Overly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And they will change over time. They will change I'm over sure. time as we get as we get used to stuff, and then as we rebel against it, and then we get used to, and it it will it will you know it will go I around. Mean, for and, instance, and I had an image where the hand was cut off, and I used some AI to regenerate the hand, and it you know made it look like a better image. But I didn't do anything else or change backgrounds or stuff like that. But I guess everybody's going to have their own opinions about it, and it's it's going to be an ongoing debate. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like the the background swap is the thing. It when people ask me to swap a background, my instinctive reaction is no. And part of that is because I know that it's fake, and I can't not see it as fake. And then I surprise myself because I do it because they paid me to. And then I look at it the next day and forget that I've swapped the background because I've done it well and it doesn't look fake anymore. Like, oh yeah. It, Maybe maybe I should just get over myself and you know swap a background when people ask me to swap a background, um, but you know, there we are. Um, hmm. Yes, yes, Ellie. Yeah. If if they ask me to put a giant cupcake floating in midair, 
um and the flying dog yeah yeah that that might be that might be stretching my personal boundaries of what i would do but obviously for you Ellie, <laughs> different boundaries right different kinds of work um <laughs> oh okay folks um I, I think um, we, we're probably going to go to doing the portrait probe next week at this point because it's it's getting on late. Um, we've had a, a good um, an important, I think, um, discussion there about AI. Um, and it's going to it's going to keep it's going to keep coming around. Um, so. Yeah, don't I don't want anyone's takeaway to be from from today to be that they should or shouldn't do something that they have or haven't been doing, um, or that there's some kind of new requirement here. Really, the only rule is going to be be guided by what you feel you want to do as an artist. If what you want to do as an artist is carve portraits in matchsticks, eventually you're going to outgrow this group and find a group of people who carve portraits in matchsticks that can help you more than we can um and that's just kind of you know it's sad but it's cool as well if that's your thing and you find your thing um always pursue that um we'll see how it uh how it develops um so yeah let's let's um call time on it for for today there and we'll come back next week and do the portrait probes all right mm -hmm. before Wait, we go can you give us a theme please oh for april there we go i was just about to think that okay okay so um I, i'm i'm gonna go with what was there's, there's always a backstory with me. I can't just give you a simple answer. I have to ramble on for 10 minutes. I apologize, but here we go. Here's the 10 minute ramble. The theme for March was going to be female portraits, March containing, as it does, 8th of March, International Women's Day. I wanted to make it about empowering female portraits. And I was trying desperately to get a very cool photographer who does really great work in that field um, to come on and speak to us. And she was not available. Um, so I said, well, how about April? And she said, no, I'm not available in April. I said, how about me? She's like, look, I'm not going to do it. So I don't know what why that is. Um, maybe we'll look at some of her work without getting to speak to her. Um, I'm not holding the grudge. Um, she just didn't want to speak to me, I guess. Um, but that's going to be the theme for April. It should have been for March, but there we go. So I want you to take a picture of a female subject, um, but the the purpose of the picture has to be empowerment. You can do what you like with that. Um, it could be, if you're thinking about who the subject is, somebody who's already a powerful figure in your life or in your community or something of that nature. Um, or it could be depicting somebody who is not usually depicted in that way um, and flipping it on its on its head a little bit. Um, yeah. And no ladder, Slava. Yeah, no ladder. Um, <laughs> that's the only rule on portrait track. Okay. <laughs> We can you can empower, have the we can't empower women to paint houses. <laughs> um sleeping cats let sleeping cats lie and flying dogs. <laughs> you, you knock yourself out with the with the AI additions. Um but yeah, the empowering female portrait. Um I will I will um I'll have I'm gonna have one last stab at getting that photographer on to talk to us. Um um just because, yeah, why not? What's the worst she can do? Say no again. Um, and there we are. All right. Good stuff. I will see you here this time next week. Have a good one. Bye. Thank you, Karen. Bye. Well done, Kambua. Thanks, Ivan.